Hi, hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So if you guys have been watching the live stream, you'll know we've moved on to uh, Hero Siege. But before I continue moving on for you guys on YouTube, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the last update with the Grim Dawn character. I didn't play normally as long as I would, as I kind of just wanted to jump through and experience Grim Dawn again. I didn't want to go through the whole game, challenge, celestials, farm, pretty much everything. So this is pretty much where we have ended up on the character. Actually, I can't tell. Is there Grim Dawn music on? No, just atmosphere stuff, whatever. So essentially, let's go ahead and talk about the character here. You guys followed the first video you'll know that we're kind of playing like a pseudo righteous fire type character so we're level 80 right now and we're in ultimate difficulty which is the third difficulty and i'm gonna go ahead and just go into a portal and just run back to the last boss but i don't think we're gonna go all the way to the boss and then we'll explain the character as we're going on i guess the last boss of like vanilla because it's not the shattered stuff the uh whatever it's called so really like the character honestly it picked up a lot i would say the first difficulty was honestly the hardest difficulty for me which i am not used to experiencing in grim dawn um usually you blast through the first difficulty you blast through the second one and then ultimate kind of becomes a bit of a slog but i didn't really feel like that at all on this character so the core gameplay loop is basically walking so when we're walking here we are triggering uh let's see here under Inquisitor, we got this aura of Senior. And this pretty much does majority of the trash killing and a lot of debuffing. Now, on top of this, we are also utilizing <clears throat> our shield charge. And our shield charge is basically this skill right here, which is Vire's Might. Although Vire's Might isn't actually doing the damage here, it is the Volcanic Stride. Now, if you remember anything from before, um, we have Imp on our Devotion Tree on Volcanic Stride, which is leaving these little pockets here of green that are constantly AoE overlapping and stacking. We've also added these guys to our group. So these are the Summoned Guardian of Empyrean, and we have them with Celestial Presence to shred extra Ellie Res, which stacks with the aura. Now, for these guys, we have decided to go with Crown because Crown is giving us flat target or flat elemental reduction, which also stacks with a percentage, and they pretty much just automate that. As for the rest of the devotions, you can kind of see what we have here. This is not really like optimized. This is kind of just, I went through the campaign, capped my devotion and that's it. I didn't like make this in a builder. If I made this in a builder, it'd be much more optimized. Uh, we've got turtle for some defenses, along with that bubble can be slapped on any of your defensive skills. This is imp that I was talking about with our shield charge. Um, over here, we grab chariot, mainly for offensive ability scaling to help with our crit and wayward soul is just extra healing. Down here, we have uh, Phoenix. Phoenix is pretty cool. We have this one on our Aether Ward, which is one of our components. Down over here, we've got Giant's Blood, so chance when we get hit, essentially, to get a Surge of Regen. This is very, very strong. I noticed when I started picking up Giant or a Behemoth over here, we started getting a lot more survivability. Um, Phoenix, we have on Judgment, which works really well because we pull everything in with Judgment and then proc kind of like another Righteous Fire. And then over here, we grabbed Olzen's Torch, but we don't actually have a, another good skill to put it on. So at the moment, I just have it on my Leap, but I, I would like to have a better solution for this, but we don't at the moment. That pretty much covers the Devotions. Oh, here's a nice little totem thing. So Judgment I was telling you about is this button right here. Judgment pulls targets in. Some targets are too big, so they cannot be pulled in. So instead, Judgment will just always debuff them. The debuff from Judgment is very strong because it reduces enemy defensive ability, which makes you less likely to miss and more likely to crit, which is really, really nice. Uh, I have to say the character got way more tanky after acquiring um, Behemoth that we showed there on the Constellation. But also, if you find this guy in the campaign, I forgot where he is. At the bottom, you can see Kill Ryan Shattered Soul component. All you basically need to know about that is... It's chance when you get hit to create um, like some aura and you leech off the aura and it's partial fire and vitality. This component here, I think really, really, really made the sustain so much better on the character. So I was very, very happy for that. It's also pretty happy that the single target on the character started getting a lot better. So one of the things I did to push the single target higher is if you look over here at our skill tree, I went with Deadly Aim and capped that out. So we have like 18% offensive ability with damage and all uh, crit damage and that procs. It's like 50% uptime. 
But then in Oathkeeper, we have this buff called Ascension, which kind of makes you, like, near immortal to, like, miniature hits. So when you're constantly surrounded, Ascension is crazy, while also giving you a big chunk of all damage. But furthermore, also giving you another multiplier to your offensive ability. So you get really nice steroids there, uh, just for pretty much doing damage. And that's all automated. You, well, you just press the button, so. I think we'll just uh, go swing up. Uh, sw okay, here we go. Here's, like, a little mini boss you can see. Then we get Ascension on, and now we're kind of just cruising. To scale the single target more, I think you'd want some form of cooldown recovery. This cooldown recovery, I believe, would allow you to create more blazing trails with Vire's Might, which will just allow you to stack that damage over time. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Another nice thing is that with this build, there's this body armor here called uh, Rune Armor of Ignifar. And the rune armor, if you look, it says Ignifar's presence granted by item. is actually another miniature aura that is constantly applying damage. So it's pretty cool, kind of like an aura din, right? Other than that, I think I covered most of the skills here. The last one would be, I guess, Judgment. So the reason I max it is it gets bigger AoE every time you level it. Then this here, Crushing Verdict, even though it has physical scaling and stuff, it's 272 defensive ability shred, which is a ton for the points invested. And then Heart of Wrath is like another fire bubble that kind of occurs naturally over time. I click this or did we? Oh, we already did this. Just kidding. Overall, pretty fun. Not gonna lie. It's a pretty fun character. Uh, if you give me maybe like an hour or two, it should be pretty pretty easy. Not now. Probably like 30 minutes after the video's up. I'll go to like Grim Tools or Grim Calc and try to import the character from the file. And then that way you guys can just have the character and it'll be in the comments below, so. I can do that for you guys. Let's see where we going this way. Let's go this way. As for my stats here, I pretty much primarily pushed into physique. And as for the green gear, because the green gear is typically monster in frequency, I believe, in this game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got there. So, unfortunately, I do believe this is locked behind DLC, which is the bottom right area. Can I show this on the map here? Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, in this place over here, I believe just somewhere around, like, right over here, or maybe right over here, you can farm these beetles, which drop this shield. Uh, TLDR, it gives big elemental damage to the aura that does damage, and it reduces everything's attack speed, which is really nice, because you're pretty much melee on everything. This, I think, actually drops off the mini boss to the last boss here, which essentially what this is doing is it's giving bigger AoE to our, uh, it's giving bigger AoE and fire damage to our aura. I don't know how important this one is, um, because elemental just has more damage on it, but yeah, that's pretty much just what we're using. I have to say some of the, the best features Grimdon has added so far the jump ability that kind of is naturally on every character now is a super sick addition. Grimthon can be a bit slow and clunky to go through, but when you have this ability to just like jump over the monsters, it feels really good. Also, I did not know this, but it's also a um, an iframe. For a very short amount of time, it's an iframe. So if you know like wave based mechanics or certain things that stuff are doing, uh, you can actually straight up iframe them, which is really cool. Epic belt. That might actually be better than what I'm wearing, I'm gonna be honest. Too bad we're done with this. Alright, we're just gonna stop it right here since you guys kinda saw the gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, down below, I'll try to link you guys a little builder so you can kind of just copy everything and import it so it should be easier since there's a lot that I didn't cover because Grimdon's very complex, like all my gear, for example. So if you guys like the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box, except for Sundays. Right now, we're checking out Hero Siege since they have remade the game like three times, and I think they're on the fourth season of Hero Siege 2 now. Still the same game, but like rebranded, so... We're going to go play that. Enjoy yourselves. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.